Inflammation is a natural and necessary response by the immune system to protect the body from infections, injuries, and other threats. However, chronic inflammation, also known as inflammer aging, refers to a persistent low-grade inflammatory state that occurs in aging individuals. Inflammation is the body's response to harmful stimuli, such as pathogens, damaged cells, or irritants. Acute inflammation is a short-term beneficial response to an injury or infection. It helps the body heal and fight off pathogens. In contrast, chronic inflammation is a long-term persistent state of inflammation that can be detrimental to health. Chronic inflammation often begins with a triggering event, such as infection, tissue injury, exposure to irritants, or the presence of foreign substances. These triggers can lead to acute inflammation, which is the initial response to the insult. In cases of chronic inflammation, the acute inflammatory response fails to resolve properly. This can occur for various reasons, including persistent irritants, ongoing tissue damage, or impaired regulation of the immune response. The immune system plays a central role in chronic inflammation. Immune cells, particularly white blood cells known as leukocytes, are continuously recruited to the site of inflammation. These immune cells release pro-inflammatory molecules such as cytokines, including tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukins, chemokines, and other signaling molecules. These amplify the immune response and recruit additional immune cells. Over time, immune cells accumulate at the site of inflammation. These cells include macrophages, neutrophils, and lymphocytes. Macrophages in particular play a key role in chronic inflammation as they become activated and release these inflammatory mediators. Prolonged inflammation can lead to tissue damage and scarring known as fibrosis. This results from the persistent release of inflammatory molecules and the action of immune cells on healthy tissues. In certain cases, Chronic inflammation can be associated with autoimmune diseases, where the immune system mistakenly targets and damages the body's own tissues. This leads to the production of reactive oxygen species, which are highly reactive molecules that can cause cellular damage and contribute to chronic inflammation. The accumulation of oxidative stress can further exacerbate tissue damage. In addition, Chronic inflammation can lead to epigenetic changes, which alter the regulation of genes involved in the inflammatory response. These changes can contribute to a persistent pro-inflammatory state. Inflammatory molecules create feedback loops that sustain and amplify the immune response. For example, cytokines can stimulate the production of more cytokines, creating a self-perpetuating cycle of inflammation known as a positive feedback loop. With aging, there is often a shift towards chronic inflammation. This can be due to factors like cellular damage, senescent cells, and changes in the immune system's function. Chronic inflammation is associated with numerous age-related diseases, including atherosclerosis, diabetes, neurodegenerative disorders, and cancer. Chronic inflammation can affect the entire body, which is known as systemic inflammation, or it can affect specific tissues and organs, known as local inflammation. For example, systemic inflammation can lead to what is known as metabolic syndrome, which is the medical term for a combination of diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. Local inflammation, on the other hand, can contribute to things such as joint disorders. As with the previous hallmark, the relationship between inflammation and aging is complex and an ongoing area of research. However, if you looked at many YouTubers, especially fitness ones, you would have likely seen them promoting a range of lifestyle modifications that can help with inflammation. Ice submersion has been a popular one recently, as cold water causes vasoconstriction of blood vessels, reducing blood flow to the area, leading to less inflammation and swelling. The idea behind this is that it reduces the oxidative stress, which can lead to secondary damage to cell signaling and remodeling processes. 
But if you start going down the rabbit hole of nutrition and lifestyle modifications and all of these things that can supposedly improve inflammation, you'll find constant ongoing debates between scientists, nutritionists and doctors between what works and what doesn't. So I'm just going to leave this hallmark here as a bookmark. <laughs>